Hi world, welcome back or welcome if you're new here. My name is Keely and I'm a booktuber and I also post, hopefully starting to post educational content for uh, my journey as I move toward a PhD. Also still working on the intro. Some people have theirs down perfectly and other than going, hi world, I don't really have an intro. But this is going to be the start of a reading vlog slash day in the life kind of vlog again, but it's going to be over the course of multiple days. What I wanted to start with though was a try a chapter tag for this stack of books here that have been on my shelf for a while. Let's go through these books and then I will try reading them and see if I'm going to enjoy them. So the first one that we have is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. This one says 17 year old Rin cares about only two things, her family and her family's graveyard, and right now both are in dire straits. Since the death of their parents, Rin and her siblings have been scraping together a meager existence as grave diggers in the remote village of Colbrun, which sits at the foot of a harsh and deadly mountain range that was once home to the Fae. The problem with being a grave digger in Colburn, though, is that the dead don't always stay dead. So the risen corpses are known as bone houses, and legend says that they're the result of a decades old curse. When Ellis, an apprentice map maker with a mysterious past, arrives in town, the bone houses attack with a new ferocity. What is it that draws them near? And more importantly, how can they be stopped for good? And then it seems like Ellis and Rin work together to fix it. It sounds like something I'm really going to enjoy. So I just need to pick it up and the font is pretty big so I don't think it will take me that long to get through the first chapter. And we have Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. This came out within the last few years. This is a Camelot King Arthur retelling. It says everyone knows the legend of Arthur destined to be a king of the beautiful Guinevere who will betray him with his most loyal knight Lancelot of the bitter sorceress Morgana who will turn against them all. But Elaine alone carries the burden of knowing what is to come for Elaine of Shalott is cursed to see the future. On the mystical island of Avalon, Elaine runs free and learns of the ancient prophecies surrounding her and her friends. Countless possibilities, almost all of them tragic. When their future comes to claim them, Elaine, Guinevere, Lancelot, and Morgana accompany Arthur to take his throne and stifle in Camelot. Where magic is outlawed, the rules of society chain them, and enemies are everywhere. Yet the most dangerous threat may come from within their own circle. I've heard amazing things about this one, and I picked it up originally for that King Arthur challenge readathon thingy that I was doing that I kind of half-assed when I realized no one else was doing it with me, which was totally fine. I just ended up getting really burnt out on King Arthur stuff, so I haven't picked this one up ever, but I would really like to. Typically with try a chapter tag, what ends up happening is that I end up reading all of the books at the same time instead of getting rid of any, so we shall see. The next one is The Book of Speculation by Erica Swyler, and I have not seen anyone talk about this one on booktube, but I saw it at the bookstore and immediately fell in love with the cover and that it had deckled edges and these like French flaps, so let's see. One day a mysterious old book arrives on Simon Watson's doorstep on Long Island Sound. Filled with elaborate scripts, sketches, and whimsical flourishes, it tells of doomed lovers and generations of circus mermaids who have drowned, just like Simon's mother on July 24th, or yeah, on July 24th, which is just weeks away. As his childhood friend and fellow librarian, Alice looks on with alarm, Simon becomes increasingly worried about his sister who ran off to join the circus six years ago. Could there possibly be a curse on his family? What secrets are hidden in this fantastical book? And will those secrets doom or save the remaining Watsons? Interesting. Okay, this one could end up being really good or not great because it deals with people that were in the circus and mermaids. And typically when people write books about that stuff. It's not with the best language around people with bodily difference, uh, especially if they're in the circus, but we will see how that works out. And then the final one that I have is Hollow by B. Catling, author of The Vor, which I have not read, but I just fell in love with this cover a couple years ago when I was looking for creepy books, and then I never picked it up. This one says, after the sudden death of the high church's sacred oracle, the world spirals deeper into bedlam, evil forces envelop the countryside, the line between life and the afterlife begins to blur, and a series of strange mysteries unfolds. A young monk has ecstatic visions and loses his ability to speak. An underground revolution is sparked in a small village with a woman called Dull Gret at the helm, and Barry Follett, a mercenary, leads his gang of marauders across a treacherous terrain filled with giants and dangerous sirens to deliver the one thing that can restore order to the divine landscape. Sounds freaking weird. <laughs> so these are the four books that I have for this section of Try a Chapter. I'm so sorry I keep wiggling 
the camera because I'm bumping my desk. Um, but these are the four books that I have. I'm going to try a chapter of each and then I will report back. I'm working today and I have a bunch of stuff that I'd like to get done. I also would really like to read another chapter in The Making of Asian America because I haven't picked it up in the last few days, but I am very much enjoying it. The next chapter is chapter three and I think I marked it off. Yeah, it's from page... 59 to 88 so a 30 page <laughs> chapter which I can get through that I don't know if I can get through it in a day but I can definitely make uh, progress on it so I want to get started on chapter three but now I'm going to enjoy my coffee and hopefully wake up more because my face is very puffy from being tired <laughs> and then hopefully get a lot done for work and read some of those chapters and then I'll check back in. Just wanted to quick hop back on. I did read the first chapter of Hollow, but I'll have to update in a little bit because I have a meeting in a couple minutes. But I just got a delivery, so I ran downstairs to grab it. I'm taking an online course that is actually a book club. It will be um, led by Professor David Wong, and he is interviewing five Chinese authors about their works. And I only had, or four Chinese authors, I only had one of the books, so I had to get the rest. So I had to get Lenin's Kisses by Jan Lianki. And this was a finalist for the Man Booker International Prize at some point. I don't know what year. Then I also grabbed Waiting by Ha Jing, which was the only one of this these that I have actually heard of. So I'm super excited for that one. And then the final one, but I think this is actually the first one we're starting with, is Red Sorghum by Mo Yan. And this is winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature. So I'm super duper excited to dive into these books and learn more about Chinese literature and culture. Probably most exciting of all of that is that I bought just a simple planner off of Amazon. I have the yearly planner from Ruby Granger's Pumpkin Productivity, but I wanted one that has like spiral bound. I love the one from Ruby. It's made for people that like hop in and out of planners, so it's undated, but I wanted a more formal one because I'm going to be helping out with a community project that will be ongoing for the next year or so. So I wanted to be able to have that plus my reading and stuff on a separate calendar, like where I can continue to add, oops, sorry, I'm shaking, <laughs> continue to add like to-do lists and stuff, but okay, I have 30 seconds. I gotta go. Do I have another book haul, even though I've had a billion lately? Yes. <laughs> My husband read The Appeal by Janice Hallett and he really, really loved it. And so he wanted another book to read. So I recommended him The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. And he was like, perfect, how do I get a copy? And I was like, well, I've seen copies at the thrift store. Let me go get you one and get myself some books. That's exactly what I did. So now I'll show you, I grabbed Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. I've already read this one and freaking loved it and found a used copy for $2.99. So I figured why not add it to my shelves? One I'd never heard of is The Crystal Ribbon by Celeste Lim. And it just looked really cute. And it's a former library copy from the Hatboro Union Library, <laughs> which is a different town. I don't think that's really anywhere near me. Former li There was a bunch of old library copies there, so I decided to grab this one also for $3.99. And then one that I was really excited to find because I almost actually bought a copy of this at Barnes & Noble before, but I didn't. And this one is uh, Yokai Stories, Ghostly Tales from Japan, but the manga version. And so it's Lefkadi O'Hearn, the very interesting dude. I wanna see if I can find like a biography of him. It was an Irish guy that moved to I think like Tokyo and changed his name and then wrote a whole bunch of Japanese stories or like documented Japanese um, ghost stories. I have a couple of his books so I'm very interested in this dude. This is um, from Tuttle Publishing and they publish a lot of Japanese works. So I'm excited to have this manga. I'm gonna read it tonight. The final book then that I grabbed is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This is book one in the All Souls. It used to be a trilogy now there's more books. I had a copy of it a long time ago and read it with my sister and then as I'm rereading it I realized that I definitely DNF'd this book at one point because I was so frustrated with Matthew who is one of the main characters. I was so frustrated with him as a character just being written as like a really toxic like patriarchal vampire but I pushed through those feelings and I'm now like 75% of the way through it and freaking love the story so much. I have the second one also on my Kindle so as soon as I finish the first one I'm gonna immediately dive into the second one but I found a used copy of it at the thrift store for $2.99 and you can see I'm very very far. So I decided to just go ahead and grab it. So the only other book that I got then is The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime which is downstairs because my husband's been reading it on the couch and yeah it is five o'clock on Friday. 
finally done work so excited it's been a very very long week back in the office well the office like I'm at home but working been getting a bunch of reading done I have started the first book for my Chinese book club and that one is China in 10 words by Yu Hua and I am enjoying it so far I've only read the introduction I've already highlighted some stuff I really like um the writing so far so hopefully I will enjoy this one and the plan for the weekend is to stay inside because it is supposed to like torrential downpours over the next day or so they're calling for up to like four and a half inches of rain which is crazy but my husband just ran out right now to grab us some dinner we're just gonna hang out for the rest of the night i did all the laundry today anyone else get really nervous whenever there's like a big storm coming that something will happen and you won't have access to water so you like do all your chores early just in case that ever happens it hasn't happened yet but we are um relatively close to a couple big bodies of water and they get flooded really quickly especially calling for potentially four inches of rain in 24 hours i definitely wanted to make sure that we had like all of our laundry done ahead of time all of our dishes are done we have cases of water in case we need them we're good but that is what I'm planning on doing for the rest of the weekend. I'm also gonna do some more like deep dive research into comprehensive exams and those reading lists. I was able to find some reading lists online, but I still, I need to figure out what I'm doing because I keep looking at master's programs thinking that like, oh, maybe I should just do like an accelerated second master's in order to prep for a PhD. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just so excited to go back to school that I can't stop looking at all these programs. But I also need more programs to be online because we only have one car and I work full time and it would be amazing if I could find a program that's online. But I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm gonna keep looking, but that's it. So I'll update another day. <laughs> I start officially applying for jobs and you know the job I just wanted to give a reading update. It is now Saturday morning and it's freaking pouring out. The yard out front is already basically underwater and it's supposed to rain for the rest of the day through the night and then the wind is supposed to pick up so it's like a little bit crazy outside. It's already really flooded too and it's supposed to keep raining so we'll see how this goes. But reading update. I read more of A Discovery of Witches last night. I am not sure how far I am now. Um, but I did read more. I am probably going to finish this one this weekend, hopefully. I'm freaking loving it. Like I said, I have the second one on my Kindle. Then read more of The Making of Asian America. I did not finish chapter three like I was hoping to. I got up to page 69 and chapter three ends on page 88. So I still have like 20 pages <laughs> almost left, but that's okay. I have been really enjoying it. So I am hoping to make more progress in this one today. And then I just finished the first chapter or the first essay in China in 10 words. And the first one is all about the word people. And it was super interesting hearing from the perspective of the author who grew up during the Cultural Revolution or was like alive in China during the Cultural Revolution, which I don't know anything about, but I do have that book, The World turned upside down I think is the name of that book that's all about the cultural revolution in China so I'm very very interested to read that book now having read this first essay because he talks about the concept of the people and what the people means collectively in China and how it kind of lost all meaning and then gained new meaning and he talks a little bit about Tiananmen Square and what life was like back then uh, and how it I don't really know anything about Tiananmen Square. It's just something that I have seen pop up in the news every once in a while, primarily on social media. And uh, so that was interesting to like get a little bit of insight into what times were like in China at that point, because he was talking about how in the 80s, China was very different where people were pretty happy and there was a lot, I mean, this is just his perspective, my understanding of his perspective, which is that people were pretty happy and there was like a lot of prosperity and people, like the police kind of disappeared and people were just like governing themselves. And it sounds really interesting. So I'm very excited to get to, very eager to get to that one. Um, the world turned upside down, but I also don't want to 
shy away or move away from the making of Asian America, which I think reading these books all at the same time along with um, the World Turned Upside Down will be a really interesting process. I also then picked up Ali Abdul's new book, which I forget what it's called, something product, Feel Good Productivity, I think, which has been pretty interesting so far. I read about the first 15% on my Kindle during work and I've been highlighting a bunch. It's an interesting take on this whole like self-help productivity like field basically where he's talking a lot about um previous studies and how in general like if you feel good you're more productive and I was like yeah that kind of makes sense like that tracks like when you feel like crap you don't really want to do anything you don't have the motivation to do anything and you get kind of trapped in this cycle uh very much have come out of that cycle <laughs> I was in that cycle for a couple months um multiple times off and on over the last year with depression and anxiety so it's an interesting book to be reading as I'm like coming out of that and doing getting a lot of stuff done for work that I had been um, not necessarily putting off but just didn't really have the energy or the time to get it done. So that's been pretty interesting but I'm probably only going to read that one during the week when I'm actually working um, because it has to do with work and I try to like shut off my work brain when I'm not working so we'll see how that one ends up going. But I did start reading some of the books for that try a chapter tag. So I read the first chapter of Hollow by B. Catling. And this one's pretty interesting so far. You are following, oh, Barry Follett, who is the main character, at least in the first chapter. And he, it feels very like Joe Abercrombie's books, where it's just like a band of, um, they're, I think, like a mixture of like thieves, assassins, mercenaries. And he has hired all of these people to help him travel and get the oracle safely to wherever the oracle needs to go. So in the first chapter he's really just introducing these individual people that are members of his team and that he doesn't really like some of them and other ones he does really like. It's set in I think the 1500s and I am very very interested in it so far really enjoying that setting. So I read the first chapter of that one. I'm going to continue on. And then I read the first little introduction part of The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones and I'm going to sit here and read the first chapter. The introduction, you're um, talking about these two little kids who grew up with their dad and he always said like you're not allowed to go into the woods, don't follow me, like I go into the woods but you guys are not allowed to because there's something scary in there. And one of the day the little girl is like, I want to see what's in the woods and she goes in the woods and then there's this dude who's like following her and watching her and she's really scared and then the dad shows up and like scares him away and it turns out that that is one of the bone houses which is just like a corpse kind of <laughs> and the dad says like oh you don't have to be scared if you work with death like it's it's chill I'm not I'm not scared of him and the daughter's like hey I don't want to be scared will you teach me and then he's like yeah sure so then he takes her into the woods and like teaches her all kinds of stuff and then that's kind of the end of that little introduction part. So I'm very, very interested in this one so far. It sounds like it's going to be weird and creepy and I am here for it, especially because of the weather today. But that's kind of the update of what my reading looks like right now. I am reading a lot of things, not really finishing anything, which makes me feel a little bit anxious because I do like to knock books out. I've read 38 books so far this year that I have completed and I have other lots and lots of other ones that I'm like in the middle of and I think I need to just continue to push back against this feeling of like you gotta finish, you gotta finish, you gotta finish because like I just have to keep making progress and then they're gonna like roll out where I'm gonna end up finishing a lot of books all together. Like this one I'm gonna be reading and then eventually finish because I've got three other books for the Chinese book club that I am uh, taking a course. It's like a um, edX course I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's edX and not Coursera and so I will need to finish this one to get through that course so I can you know move on to the next ones. So it's just interesting battling my brain um, but then also like constantly picking up new books for this studying that I'm doing this independent research and I've been spending a lot of time looking at a bunch of different programs like do I want to go the history route do I want to go to the comparative literature route which way do I want to go do I want to go to the social work route because I I have my master's in social work like which way which way do I want to go and I have no idea and I keep reaching that thing where it's like oh, I can't make a decision I'm just gonna stop and it's like calm down, tell your brain to knock it off, and just keep going. <laughs> it's so frustrating how that happens when my brain is like, let's go, let's, let's go. And then I can't make a decision. And it's like, well, you should just give up. 
So that's something that I will be working through. But something very exciting today is my glasses will be here. I am super duper excited. Hopefully they fit and then I will show you guys. I wore glasses when I was a little kid. I didn't actually need them. I was getting chronic headaches from like life stress and trauma in the household. But back in the 90s, they didn't talk about that. And so they were like, you're getting chronic headaches. It must be your eyes. So even though my all my eye exams were fine, they were like, let's just try. So I had glasses as a little kid. Uh, if I can find a picture, I will insert it here. Um, and I only had them for a little tiny bit and then got rid of them. And I did get made fun of for wearing glasses. Remember when that was a thing? I don't know if that's still a thing. That's so dumb. But now in my 30s, I do actually need glasses. <laughs> I'm really feel I've been really feeling it the last couple of days too, where I have astigmatism in my left eye and it makes seeing screens or reading hard because my eyes feel like they're constantly like wiggling and so it makes me kind of dizzy and then my eye doctor was like doing the exam and she was like oh you're squinting to like get that to stop she's like that's probably causing strain and then causing headaches and I was like cool so she was like let's give you a very very low prescription and try this out and get some glasses and see if it helps so I will probably only need to wear glasses when I'm reading or looking at screens which is like 99% of my freaking life. She said that they might even help with driving too. I know that if you have astigmatism and you drive at night that the headlights kind of look like stars almost, like the, the light, like, do you know what I mean? I don't know how to describe it. And I don't really have that, but my eyes do hurt when I drive at night, but my eyes also hurt most times. Like if I was outside right now where it's super duper overcast, but that really like bright gray overcast, I would need to wear sunglasses because my eyes are really sensitive. So I don't know. We'll see how this works. I'm just excited to have like a new accessory. And of course I got gay glasses because I, I was going to get gay glasses. So they're rainbow glasses. I'm super excited, but those are out for delivery and it's freaking pouring and I really want them. And the post office is taking their time, which is annoying. So I will have glasses. I am going to try to remember to keep filming like little clips here and there until it just becomes more of a habit and then this will actually be like an interesting vlog because I think in the past my vlogs have been very like I sit here and talk here's something I sit here and talk which is fine but I, I would like for them to be more engaging I guess I don't know as I'm still learning this process but at this point I'm just rambling and procrastinating from reading which is what I really want to do hoping that the post office will uh, show up with my glasses <laughs> but that's it I will check back in later okay my glasses actually just got here I'm so excited um, I opened it downstairs because it was soaked but they come in this little case I use Zenny optical and then I bought this case that's like flat but then it opens up uh, like this yeah they open like this I use Zenny optical not sponsored obviously because I don't <laughs> never worn glasses as an adult to be sponsored um, but this is the case that I got, just the blue one that folds up really small. I am so nervous. I'm really hoping that they fit. Pop it open. Okay, here we go. It'd be amazing if they did fit perfectly and then I wouldn't have to worry about getting another pair and hoping. Oh, they look so cool. Okay, they're all like foggy. This is what they look like. Oh, that's weird. I mean, I'm definitely like, Oh, that is really funky. It feels like my eyes are like, <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> that's, that's such a stupid thing. Like, oh my God, wow, glasses make it clearer to see. That is just, that is weird. But yay, okay, I like them. I'm so happy. And they're not like too tight or anything. Yay, okay, I'm so excited. My gay, my gay glasses are here. <laughs> that's wild. That it's just, it's just like so much clearer. Like I can see. And it's not as if, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but like I can, I can see obviously like my prescription is very, very small, but it just makes it a little bit harder where I feel like I have to put in more work to see things like writing clearly and to see my, my laptop screen. Like I have things made a little bit bigger on my laptop screen um, because throughout the day it does get harder to see and I just get tired. Yay! So excited though that my glasses are here and my husband is not even home to celebrate with me. We had to get our car inspected and so he's off picking up our car. Um, but yay. Okay. That makes me very happy. So, so far I've had very good luck with 
as any optical in that the very first time that I used them, it worked out. But yay, very, very excited for these. Now in line for Starbucks, and the line is a little bit insane, but I just got done at the bookstore and I ended up just going ahead and getting an uh, account with Barnes and Noble. So they gave me a tote bag, which was really nice. And this is like a really sturdy tote bag too. I'm freaking surprised. I was looking for one book in particular, which is Butter. It's a new non, or it's a new fiction that came out. That's like a mystery thriller. But they didn't have it, unfortunately. So I just got one of everything else. Um, I got this one, which I'm very excited to read. This one is In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. And this was is a nonfiction about her escape from North Korea. And I think it's like one of the most famous stories um, coming out of North Korea in terms of like people leaving. Then I did pick up one book for my husband, so that one is in here. Then this one I was really excited to find for, I mean, it's $25, it was insane, but online I could not find a copy. And that's The Rising Sun by John Toland. This one is all about the decline and fall of the Japanese empire in 1936 to 1945. So it's absolutely massive, but it covers a lot of information about World War II, which is not something I really know anything about in terms of other cultures. I really only know about the United States. So I'm excited for that one. This is the one I got for my husband. So he finished The Appeal, which is an epistolary novel, and he's been looking for another one. So I recommended to him Night Film by Marisha Pessel, which I read back in 2014 and absolutely loved. That one is a murder mystery, but it's told through like news articles and documentary pieces and stuff like that. I also grabbed this one, which I'm so excited that I found. This one is Histories of Nations. How their identities were formed um, by edited by Peter Furtado and I believe that this is a collection based on other parts of the world um, and how identity is formed based on those parts of the world and so I'm very excited because I'm super interested in identity formation and then the final one that I got is one I've seen on a lot of reading lists for comprehensive exams for East Asian studies and that one is Hirohito and the making of modern Japan by Herbert Bix and so I got two Japanese history books, which I'm very excited for. Unfortunately, they're both kind of around the same time period, except for Hirohito, I think covers 60 years or at least part of his 60 year rule. I just realized you can see my finger, oh well. But it's really all they had. They did not have a decent really section on Japan. It was really focused on China and Korea. So I'm uh, going to have to build up my backlog, <laughs> massive backlog now of books about Japanese history. So what I wanted to do is come on here and give another reading update. Sorry, you can see my ring light in my glasses. I ended up reading this one, which was Yokai Stories, Ghostly Tales from Japan by Lafcadio Hearn with illustrations from Inko I Takeda. And this was just a couple of the ghost stories that Lafcadio Hearn had written down from his time when he spent in Japan. And I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was a decent collection of stories. Maybe I don't know how they picked which ones they chose for this because I know that he wrote down a lot, but I enjoyed it either way. Last night I had finished A Discovery of Witches and then I hung out with my sister today for the first time in a while and we went book shopping because of course I did. So I took my new tote bag from Barnes and Noble and used that for the books that I got. And some of them I actually had just looked at at Barnes and Noble and I didn't get them there and I'm happy that I didn't because I found them much cheaper. The first one that I picked up is Nothing to Envy Ordinary Lives in North Korea by Barbara Demick. This one won a National Book Award. I am very interested to read both of these so I think I'm more interested to read Yummy Parks in Order to Live than I am to read this one but I'm happy that I have both so that I can see if they are similar at all. Then I found a copy of Jane Eyre in I think Korean. I'm pretty positive that it's Korean but I could be completely wrong but I'm very very hopeful that this one is actually in Korean um, because I will be learning Korean over the next year or so as I'm trying for um, to prepare myself for a PhD program and a lot of the programs where you're learning about East Asian studies or Asian studies uh, want you to have some kind of level of proficiency in another language and while I know a little bit of Spanish and even less of Japanese I am also hoping that I can learn Korean. Then I found this one which I was very excited to find because I didn't know it existed. This one is Fire Road the Napalm Girl's Journey Through the Horrors of War to Faith, Forgiveness, and Peace by Kim Fook Fan Ti and this one is I believe about the life of the girl from the photo that became very, very popular um, about the horrors of what was happening 
in Vietnam. Then I found China's Western Horizon, Beijing and the New Geopolitics of Eurasia by Daniel Markey. This one is an Oxford University Press book. Uh, Daniel Markey is a senior research professor at Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies. Um, so I was excited to find this one. Anytime that I find textbooks, I get really excited <laughs> to find them because I love, my husband and I were talking about this, about whether I enjoy actually being in school or I enjoy the vibes of being in school. And I think the answer is both to an extent, but anytime that I can find like reading lists from college classes i get so excited and i save them i have a bunch saved um so happy that i found that one and then another one that i was uh, super excited to find and this is the last book that i grabbed is the beautiful country and the middle kingdom america and china 1776 to the present by john pomfret and john pomfret wrote um this one chinese lessons five classmates in the story of new china which I have right here. So I'm excited that I found uh, this one and all of the books that I found I did try to look up first in the store before I left to make sure that they weren't like controversial or crap and I don't think any of them are. Um, if they are I guess I'll learn along the way. There was at least one it's called 1421 that I'd seen at Barnes and Noble and I didn't pick it up and then I saw it at the thrift store and I was or the used bookstore and I was like oh maybe I'll get this one but when I looked it up um, it said that it's like critically panned, that it's not a good book. So I didn't look into why they said that. I was just like, sounds good to me, so I won't get that one. So those are the couple books that I got. Now let's go through the books that I'm currently reading. So I read the first chapter of Hollow. I am going to move on and read the first chapters of the other books for this try a a chapter project that I'm doing in the middle of this video. I also read the first story, at, well, first essay and introduction of China in 10 words by Yu Hua. And the first word was people. The second word is leader. So I'm very excited to continue on. I'm really, really enjoying this one so far. Then I started a nonfiction that I just got from Barnes and Noble. This one is called Histories of Nations, How Their Identities Were Forged, um, edited by Peter Furtado. And Peter collected essays from historians from all over the world, asking them to write about their country's history and then edited them and put them all in this collection. And so there are a ton in here that I probably won't get to anytime soon, but I picked it up specifically because there's one on China, one on Japan, one on the United States. And those are honestly the ones that I am most interested in. So I read the introduction and now I am currently reading the one about China. Then I finally finished the third chapter of The Making of Asian America by Erica Lee. So the third chapter was Chinese Immigrants in Search of Gold Mountain. So that was immigrating into the United States um, to the West Coast and primarily um, like California and then from west coming back east. Uh, and then now chapter four is the Chinese must go the anti-Chinese movement. And this chapter is not as long as the previous one. It's from page 89 to 108. So only 20 pages compared to the other ones that have been much longer. And then the one that I'm reading for funsies is Hollow Pox, which I talked about in my last vlog. I am about halfway through it. Really, really enjoying this one so far. I haven't picked it up in a little bit because I was reading A Discovery of Witches, but I really want to get back to this one. And then the next one that I'm going to stop right now and read the first chapter of is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. I read the kind of like introductory pages and really enjoyed it, but I haven't continued on, so I want to do that. I've been thinking about it and I don't know if I said in my last video where I was kind of talking about this journey that I'm on of having shelves dedicated to East Asian history or Southeast Asian history um, but part of what I'm trying to narrow down through this whole process is the things that I'm really interested in and something that I could potentially want to study for a PhD or maybe another master's or something. I don't know. It's still very much up in the air. It's only been like three or four weeks at this point, but I am kind of narrowing it down. I, cre I created a mind map on Canva, which I will put right here, of the different kind of categories and things that I am thinking of. And I kind of have it narrowed down into like three, I would say. One is slavery in maritime Asia. One is kind of identity and how identity is formed um, based on where you live uh, and specifically looking at Asian Americans and then also the perceptions of Asian cultures and Asian Americans from um, United States citizens. And then the third one is really white expats 
living in Asian countries and writing about Asian countries and I'm thinking of like particularly James Clavell or Lafcadio Hearn and within that it doesn't necessarily have to be an expat it can be just a white dude who was writing about Asian cultures so even like Robert Jordan was highly influenced or like heavily influenced by East Asian cultures and you can see that a lot in the Wheel of Time series and then also like Arthur Golden who wrote Memoirs of a Geisha so um I'm kind of like coming up with these ideas I'm just dumping them into this mind map to try to help me keep track of everything but that's kind of the purpose of me learning besides the fact that I just really enjoy the whole process and I'm having a lot of fun with it um and then I also have my little journal here with mushrooms on it that I write everything down um as I'm coming up with new ideas and uh figuring out how this is going to go. So now what I want to do is take some time to just sit here and read for a little bit and then hopefully remember to come back and give another update. Okay, it is now the morning of Monday the 25th. I am very, very tired trying my best to get this full cup of coffee down so that I can get another one in and hopefully we'll be waking up. My hair is also doing crazy things today. I wanted to give an update on reading as well. Last night I decided to start Where Research Begins by Thomas Mullaney and Christopher Rea and I am really enjoying it so far. I am doing all of the like writing prompts that they're giving which is supposed to be the point you're supposed to as you read through it take notes just like brain dump down get everything that you can possibly think of and then they also have some like um Oh, what did they call it? Tasks. We'll call it tasks that they want you to do. You have to come up with like a bunch of keywords or topics that you're interested in. And then they give you a couple databases and they're like, go to these databases, type in one of the topics. And as you're reading through all of the results of like articles and books and stuff that pop up, write down any of them that catch your attention for a good reason. So if there's any that as you're reading, you're like, oh, that sounds interesting. Don't like deep dive into it just then. Just write down what it is and then afterwards there's a couple questions to answer and then once you answer the questions then don't do anything. Like you're not supposed to look at the book. You're not supposed to look at your uh, databases. You're not supposed to do anything for 24 hours and then come back and then I'll read the next part to see what I'm supposed to do next. So far they're talking about being really intentional with what you want to research and being really self-centered but not in like a, a bad way. Making sure that your research is something that you are interested in, not something that others have given you if at all possible. And what they want you to do now is to really focus on taking your topics and turning them into questions. So if you say like, oh, I want to research East Asian history with a focus on patriarchy and identity, awesome. Why? <laughs> what are you asking about those questions? Why East Asian? Why not Kenyan? Why not South African? Why not, you know, Mexico? I think that process is going to be really interesting because I definitely am in the phase now where I do have topics, they all are kind of related, but I don't know how to ask the question that I'm trying to get at. I think it's gonna be an interesting process for me to go through and do that, but right now what I'm going to do is drink my coffee and while I'm still waking up for the day, get some article reading done. I got a couple of articles on um, social identity theory that I really want to read and try to start learning more about um, the different theories that are out there for identity formation. That's what I'm going to focus on now and honestly probably after today I will be done <laughs> with this vlog again because I so far haven't figured out the best way to piecemeal it out in terms of like how much content to get. I think I'm aiming for like 40 minutes for each vlog as long as it covers enough things to make it even kind of interesting <laughs> for at least me to watch back but I don't know. We'll see how this ends up going. I'm gonna get focused on reading some of these journal articles that I have on my iPad, get this coffee in my system. Hopefully it will start waking me up. I just did not sleep very well last night and then someone's car alarm was going off at like five o'clock this morning and scared me awake, which was always the best way to wake up. Let me stop rambling and procrastinating and get to work.
to go ahead and end this vlog, but I realized that I didn't talk about the other two books in my list of books that I was going to read a chapter. I read the first chapter of The Bone Houses, really, really enjoying this one and how spooky it is. We'll definitely be continuing on, continuing on with this one. I read the first chapter of Half Sick of Shadows, which is honestly only a page, and so far it's interesting, but I don't know that I'm going to continue on with it right now because I'm not really in the mood for like a King Arthur. I'm very much in the mood for like spooky, but I did just finish the first chapter of The Book of Speculation, and I think this is one that I'm also going to continue on with. So on top of reading a bunch of other books, I will now be adding three more to my currently reading pile. Um, Hollow, Bone Houses, and The Book of Speculation. All three of these are creepy and weird, and I think they're just going to be perfect for what I'm looking for for right now. I have been getting a bunch of other reading done. I yesterday sat down and read the rest of the China essay and then started the United States one. Today I want to finish the United States one and read the Japan one, and then I can have this book marked off and put on my shelf as one that I've read and got out of it what I was hoping to. Very interesting about Chinese history and how um, some of the books that we have about super ancient Chinese history are like incredibly long. So definitely want to learn more about that. I basically today just want to spend it getting as much reading done as I can because yesterday I didn't do that much reading. I ended up spending like two hours playing Disney Dreamlight Valley again and I basically restarted from the very beginning and I am way behind where I was then when I initially played but I initially played on Game Pass on Xbox for my PC but we don't have Game Pass anymore <laughs> so now I'm like all right well I'll just get the freaking game it probably would have been cheaper to get Game Pass but I was like I'll just get the game and then I'll play it and I can get the achievements that pop up and that makes me feel very satisfied so I was playing Disney Dreamlight Valley I was doing that this morning too before work but now I have work and I'm just gonna get a bunch of reading done so I think I'm gonna end the vlog here so that I can edit it and get it posted and get started on another one